Lorna Slater is with us now after surviving a vote of no confidence at Holyrood yesterday. Good morning to you. Good morning. Has the company finished? I mean, they've, they've called in the administrators, so, um, I mean, that that's the situation that we're in. It is absolutely a disaster for those employees um, who, you know, that they've got bills to pay the same the same as everybody else. So the interference that we've had from Westminster, from the Conservative government at Westminster, to torpedo our scheme has had these negative consequences for Scottish businesses, for Scottish workers, and of course, for our flagship recycling scheme. It's devastating for all of us. But let's be absolutely clear, you took the decision to stop the scheme. The decision to stop the scheme was because the UK government had put us in an impossible position. The deposit return scheme, for example, in Scotland, we would have a 20 pence deposit. When you bought your can of juice, you'd pay 20 pence and you'd get that back when you returned it. The UK government put conditions on our scheme at the last possible minute and they said, you have to match our deposit. But they can't tell us what that is because they haven't passed their regulations yet. How am I supposed to tell Scottish businesses to put together a deposit return scheme when I can't even tell them what the deposit's going to be? But that's that in 2025, 20, Minister. The scheme could have gone ahead now with the sanction no, of the UK, was... UK government and with the say-so of Circularity Scotland. Their CEO, David Harris, said to us that even with the removal of glass, it poses a challenge, but we have very quickly looked at the impact this has on the viability of the scheme and we believe the scheme remains very viable. But you called a halt. The scheme would have been, you can put schemes together without glass, that is possible to do, but it was those other pernicious conditions that the UK government put on the scheme. The UK government said we had to match the producer fees and the uh, other fees that they, they were going to put in their scheme, that we had to match their deposit levels. But the kicker is... They don't have the regulations for that. They don't. They can't tell me what those are. So if the UK government saying, well, you have to match our deposit level, but we're not going to tell you what that is, how can I tell Scottish businesses to put together a scheme like that? That is actually impossible. Our scheme was to have a 20 pence deposit. We don't know what the UK scheme will have. Because of these impossible conditions that we cannot meet, I cannot see into the future to guess what the UK government's going to but have. With, I can't with, comply with, respect, with regulations Minister, are you, are you that saying, don't exist. Are you saying the scheme we that you would, deliver it. Are you saying the scheme that you would have had up and running now would never have changed in the future. Business would never have been able to adapt to any changes that this scheme brought forward. We're talking here about potentially a change to the deposit level in two, three years' time. That was not the condition that was placed upon us. The condition that was placed upon us was that we had to launch a scheme with that met their conditions. We don't know what those conditions are. It was always the intention, but you could of have course, been flexible, for the schemes across you? the UK. It seems that... How it can seems, we be... Well, Circularity Scotland seem to believe they could be successful. Let me just read you once again from what David Harris said. The scheme going uh, live ahead in Scotland with just the metal containers and the PET was still going to be one of the most ambitious DRSs in the world. So we believe the scheme remains viable. That's what he told us earlier this month. But you have decided to cancel it. So you must take some the responsibility scheme... for the loss of these 60 jobs and all of the money wasted. You can put together deposit return schemes without glass. There are a few of them in the world. It's not the best way to run a scheme, but you can do that. The problem is these other conditions that the UK government dropped on us at the last possible minute. They made it impossible. When putting together a deposit return scheme, these are industry-led schemes. There is a business model there where industry has to charge fees from producers and then they pay the, they use those fees to run their to run the business, but also to pay the return handling fees. So that's when a small business business takes your bottle back, they get paid every for every bottle or can they take back. That's how the money flows through the system. So there's a business model there. And businesses like those small return points who are collecting your bottles, like those producers, those breweries that have to add that 20 pence or whatever the deposit is, they have all that those amounts of those fees, those need to be known so that businesses can put them into their business models. That is the certainty that Scottish businesses were asking for. Now, we had all that set up. Circularity Scotland and businesses and myself had worked for months, for years in some cases, to get all that set up for Absolutely. Scotland. Absolutely. Circularity and the UK Scotland said they could, the go ahead in, they could go ahead on those terms. The UK, on the terms that we had worked out together and the terms that we had set they up said here even in with the changes, the still minute, viable. The very words they use, they still said even viable. Without glass, 
They said even without glass, it was still viable. The other conditions imposed by the UK government created this uncertainty. We wouldn't, we don't know what the fees would be set at. We don't know what the deposit would be set at. We cannot possibly put together a business model when we don't know what those levels are. Businesses need certainty so that they can plan for these schemes. And that certainty was pulled out from under us like a rug at the last possible minute. So when in January, the UK government had been saying, yes, you can do the scheme the way you want. This is for devolved governments. Alistair Jack then went in the press and bragged in, fe in February, oh, I can shut down Scotland's scheme. And he can because of the Internal Market Act, which the Conservatives brought in after Brexit, which allows the UK government to willy-nilly, on a whim, overrule the decisions made by the Scottish Parliament. Circularity that, Scotland, Circularity Scotland were given £9 million of funding from the Scottish National Investment Bank to develop its activities. They also were allowed to borrow another £9 million from the Royal Bank of Scotland. What happens to that money? I mean, the Scottish National Investment Bank is independent of the Scottish government, so that isn't something that we have any sort of say in. Of course, when circularity but Scotland, you, but you, were you said, you said this, purpose, you set this, you set this company up, but this is public money here. What happens to that nine million pounds? Will it be recouped? The circularity Scotland was set up by industry. The way the relationship works is that the under Scottish the scheme Parliament that you set up, so will that nine million pounds be recouped? The investment decisions of the Scottish National Investment Bank are, are for them. They are completely, you know, they are independent of government and they make their own decisions about that investment. The challenges that Circularity Scotland faced are because of this decision by the UK government. I understand, and you've told us, you've told us that several times now, Minister, but I just want to know, I mean, how much money has been lost in all of this? Because, again, David Harris told us about the, the millions that have been, uh, hundreds of millions that have been used to set all of this up. How much money has been lost as a result of all of this? And you mentioned the hundreds of millions. So that is the investment. That is the estimate for the investment that businesses all over Scotland have made in this scheme, which so they did so lost. in good faith. Is all of that lost? That is, I, I don't think that that will be lost because we do intend to go ahead with the deposit return. It is delayed now until 2025 because that's when the UK government are saying they'll be able to get their scheme up and running. We, deposit return is one of the most effective ways that we can improve recycling rates in Scotland. And that reduces our emissions and reduces litter and waste. It's a really important programme and we need to get on with it. So do you so believe that, that Circularity Scotland can restart wasted. again in 2025? The, there will need to be a scheme administrator. So for Scottish businesses to comply with deposit return regulations, there will need to be a scheme administrator. But isn't there the danger here that business industry, might say, isn't there the danger that business might say to you, well, look, we've been burned already by this, so why would we go down this road again? I mean, that is one of the concerns, is that given that the UK has torpedoed our scheme and undermined the confidence in business for government decision making. How will we regain that trust in time to get a scheme launched? The quickest way to a UK wide scheme was for the Scottish scheme to go ahead, for us to gather that learning and share it with the rest of the UK. Now, if the, U if the UK government had come to us and said, look, we want to learn from you, we'll, we'll take on board your learning, we'll integrate, we'll, we'll, we'll be cooperative and, and consensus building, and we'll look at your deposit and we'll look at your fees and we'll model our system on your learning. That would have been fantastic. This then we'd is, have a deposit return scheme being rolled out over all of the UK when it in comes, the fastest possible time. But that is not what Alistair Jack absolutely. did. Absolutely. And I, again, no again, again, and with off. respect, Minister, you've told us that several times now. When it comes to confidence of business, uh, in that debate, after that debate yesterday, there's a vote of confidence in you in the Parliament. Uh, Fergus Ewing, the backbench SNP uh, MSP, former government minister, said that as the minister does not enjoy the confidence of building, uh, of business, sorry. Is this not the reality here? It's not about confidence in the scheme, it's confidence in you. The yesterday's vote of no confidence was a, a stunt by the Tories because they know the reality of what's happened here and they are trying to distract from the fact that it was Alistair Jack, the Secretary of State, who bragged that he could veto our system, who's used this Internal Market Act that was brought in after Brexit. What do you say to Fergus Ewan who says the minister block. does not enjoy the confidence of business? Is he just wrong in that? 
I have been meeting with businesses and working with them for years in many cases. As we were working towards delivering the deposit return scheme, we had been listening to businesses, we'd been making adjustments to the scheme to make it workable in Scotland. I was the one meeting with those businesses day after day and hearing what they had to say, making adjustments to the scheme to make it easier for hospitality businesses. So I absolutely think that Scotland's deposit return scheme was on track to be delivered and that industry was behind it. Given right up until the Secretary of State put that doubt in people's mind and bragged that he could veto our system. Given that uh, Fergus Ewing is a member of the party that you are in government with, would you like to see him sanctioned by the SNP for voting against you? Those are internal matters for another political party. OK, thank you very much indeed for speaking to us this morning. That's Lorna Slater, the Circular Economy Minister.